Hey guys, uh, welcome back to Sully's Models. Uh, so in this video we're going to be looking at the inner uh, part of the uh, Mustang, part of this uh, P51 uh, challenge build. Um, if this is the first time you're hearing about this, if you go into the uh, description below you'll see uh, the full um, story behind this whole uh, challenge build uh, with me and a couple of the guys. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. I'll show you, um, you know, what to sort of expect uh, from this part of the kit um, and um, sort of the, the detailing and little bits and pieces that we're going to be putting in and obviously uh, some painting and weathering going on there. So let's get on with it. Okay, so here we are with the internal parts, uh, well the cockpit anyway. Um, so um, as you can see, we're, we're nearly ready to go to uh, paint. Uh, I've always, obviously, you can see I've primed it. Um, I have added a few little extra details uh, to this um, after which realizing you're probably not going to see them but I had a bit of fun doing it anyway but all I added in um, particularly on this side was this little coiled uh, wire there and a couple of uh, I think the comrades or tubing anyway for the, um, the throttle and that there on this side I added a little bit more I've got a um, wire and covered tube if you like uh, from that box there towards the back and also a couple of um, wire looms in there uh, as well uh, so what I'm going to do now is what I'm possibly thinking I'm going to do uh, because the way this cockpit goes together is, is not the way I'm used for them to going together because basically um, normally you know with your inner cockpit these two halves all your details like here are all molded in. All this is a completely separate component with obviously adding little extra pieces on onto that. Um, which for me, and do the way the way I like to do it anyway, didn't really work. Um, because I like putting my washers in so they're sitting between the panel lines uh, there on the structure there. Um, so what I had to do is a lot of dry fitting to make sure all this um, fitted if I did it this way fortunately it does um, very nicely actually um, so it's okay for me to do it this way um, so what I might do is I might put a layer of silver uh, underneath put a couple of layers of um, worn effect or which is like the old uh, hairspray technique um, put a couple of layers of that on and then put a cockpit green olive uh, color over the top and then chip away at some of the uh, edges, particularly around some of the uh, panels there. Um, they'll be probably a bit more difficult because they're gonna need to be black and I'm not gonna try and mask these off. So yeah, we could have a bit of fun with that one potentially. Um, we'll see with that anyway. Um, but there'll be the same thing that'll be happening with the bottom floor of this. I've already put two layers of AK's worn effect there because I know for the for a fact that the uh, flooring actually was wood with a rubber coating over the top. So I'm going to be using uh, Tamiya's uh, FX85 black rubber um, and rub away uh, some of that. I'm also going to use try and use it for the tank and see how that looks because obviously normally the fuel tank is rubberized. Uh, so I'm going to try that out and see how that works. Um, and, and yeah, and see what happens with that. So, um, but what I'll do is I know I've, I've skipped ahead a little bit because what I was going to show you um, with the cockpit is actually the way it should be uh, laid out. So like I say, in the, your side walls there, they'll be going to the, you know, this part of the floor in the tank there. So it makes it like a, you know, it's one, you know, uh, unit. Um, and it says for the way I wanted to weather the inside, which you're probably not really going to see, but you know, um, I want to do it properly anyway, so um, I've done it this way because um, it works best for me. But either, either way, the whole thing goes together perfectly. I've done loads of dry fits with this and it's pretty much perfect. So, um, yeah, so we'll go to paint um, and we'll see what I decide in the meantime. But yeah, we'll be back in a second and uh, we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so... Um, there we have it, we've got the, uh, the bottom part uh, painted there, the uh, rubberized fuel tank and floor. Uh, it says I've used uh, FX85 uh, black rubber 
from Tamiya. Um, there's, uh, hopefully you can see this properly on this, I don't know, that's black, black, black. A little bit of a shade on all this, but uh, kind of see it's, it's, it's not far off really, but it's better than just using, the, I think, just using the flat black on the whole thing myself. You probably can't see it very well on that, I mean I can't see it very well as it is, so. But yeah, it gives it a little bit, rather than just using um, just a flat out black. So what I'm going to do now <coughs> is, with a flat brush, with a wee bit of water on it, and then we'll just, uh, get it in the position you can see it. It says I put a solution underneath. With a bit of luck. Slowly starting to rub away some of that uh, rubber there. I'm not gonna stab it, I guess, because I'm actually not really sure where the, the, the rudder pedals are supposed to be. So, because obviously the seat's there, so. Everyone needs a little bit of water. I'll start taking, taking the uh, paint off. go with that that's, uh, that's that done pretty much I'll add a few scratches in a bit I think put the seat in uh, may do some highlights on the uh, tank there but we'll, we'll have a look we'll see how it goes okay so that's all done I've put a bit of a actually put a white uh, powder pigment uh, across the fuel tank there and uh, give a bit more sort of, I don't know, used highlights whatever you want to call it uh, so next we will stick patch and radio compart uh, boxes on so I'm not going to glue this in this part in particular because I want to put a wash over this so I need to varnish it we get our boxes so these will sit on the back there down because I need to do a wash first so they'll look something like that stay <coughs> excuse me so next um, I'm gonna add a bit more extra detail here as well um, I'm gonna put the wires in uh, for the radio so all I've used uh, for this is um, Quite simply, a bit of um, electrical wire, strip the end off, uh, twist them together part way, tighten them up a little bit, and then uh, split them and branch them. I've drilled a couple of holes in the top there so they will slot in, and then all I have to do is just bend that so it sits down, cut it so it sits down the back there. Um, I also have another wire from there and here, which I think, I'm not understand sure, might possibly be something like an, like an earthing wire, um, or it could be an oil line, I'm not understand sure, but I know there's a wire I need to put in here. Um, potentially there's one, I think, coming from the battery, uh, sorry, the, yeah, from the battery itself. No, the radio even, that's the battery. <laughs> um, I think there's one I've got to come off there, so I've got to do a bit of, go for my reference photos and double check that. Um, and obviously put the seat in. So that's that done there. Uh, very happy with that so far. And I've got to put an oil uh, jar in there. So yeah, all pretty good. So the, the cockpit is pretty much done. Uh, I've done all, painted all my details in there. 
doing the scratch work thanks to the wires the oxygen uh, hose there uh, so again the same as everything else uh, washer's got to go on uh, and then that's pretty much sorry decals obviously I've got to put my decals on there uh, and then that's pretty much done so we'll come back to it in a second uh, hopefully with all that done there okay so uh, now we've got all the cockpit painted um, decals are on we'll give it a gloss varnish um, and I've put a uh, wash on um, using my good old most of the people have been following us long enough will know what I'm going to say next Flory's Models uh, wash uh, it's dark earth uh, for the people that don't know about this stuff it's a clay based uh, wash to many different colours uh, I generally stick with dark grime or just grime itself which is slightly lighter colour um, which I think are just right uh, for aircraft and to be fair most uh, things but so they do do other ones um, so I've slapped that on uh, over the gloss varnish let it dry uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm getting a uh, cotton wool bud uh, with some water on don't need a hell of a lot of water on it I need a little bit and simply just take some of this away and like I said before this is the reason why I wanted the um, panel uh, inside the fuselage um, rather than later on because what I like is basically if you can see this that all the rubbish collects into the corners um because that's the way i like it um so <laughs> um so yeah so i take um all the raised oops all the raised parts probably got rubbish cotton wool buds that just fall apart mind you this is the problem we don't want to put too much water on uh, um, on them as well. Um, I could afterwards take the, you know, go around with a pair of tweezers and take the loose parts off. Move that wire there because didn't glue it in. Oops. Never mind. So yeah, very lightly uh, take it off, um, and it will basically stay in all the recesses or black areas that you can't get to um, if it all goes horribly wrong you can quite simply just sort of wash it all off uh, and and start again uh, you know it, it does absolutely no damage uh, to what you've done already um, the only other point I'll probably say is just don't rub too hard because obviously because you using acrylics um, obviously the water base so you know it can sometimes react a little bit and with you rubbing too hard um, but yeah you, <coughs> sorry <coughs> you don't have to use a um, gloss varnish you can put it straight on um, to a it's just a matte finish matte finish sorry um, but what you will find with that, and to be honest with you, in some cases I actually quite like it, um, it will actually darken pretty much everything um, that you've done, but will also do exactly the same as what it's doing here. So what I'll do is I'll, again, I'll, I'll work on this a bit more and come back to you uh, when we're finished. And there you go, uh, simple as that. Uh, nicely cleaned up there, very happy with that. Um, some of the areas that are obviously can be quite difficult, you can either leave it as it is, because you know that's probably areas where it will accumulate, but if you get a paintbrush with some water on, and it'd be sort of areas like this, maybe I would have cleaned them up a little bit with uh, a paintbrush, which will, I'll just show you here actually, but you know, just uh, take some of it out. On there. And any un it's sort of like any unwanted bits as well. Clean up afterwards, but um, but yeah, you get you get the idea. Um, it can actually, um, you know, accidentally as well. With a lot of times, caught some accidental sort of effects, um, particularly if your stuff got with like bolts 
uh, you know, sometimes you can get a streak uh, under that, so it, look, it looks like a, like a dirt run, which, you know, can look, you know, really cool. Um, so, yeah, so that's all done. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. I'll probably give it a uh, matte varnish now just to seal anything in and take any uh, sheen out of it. You don't have to, but I like to, um, just to keep everything all uh, in and contained. Um, what I'll be doing next, I think, is going to be with uh, the fuel tank. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some... I'm going to do the same with this. I'll, I'll matte varnish it first to uh, lock everything in. Uh, but I'm going to use uh, some European Earth uh, pigment from AK uh, just to get that to uh, sit in um, some of these recesses as, as a sort of a, a lighter dust, maybe some a little bit um, maybe around the floor. Um, I'll have a look at that afterwards, but definitely some uh, around the tank there and uh, probably a bit on top of the battery and radio boxes as well. So uh, again, I'll go and do that and I'll, I'll be back to you very shortly. Okay, for, so for the seat, um, I'm quite happy as it is, uh, but we're going to do some uh, scratch work on it, obviously make it a bit more uh, used looking. So all I'm using um, is a fiddle of a pencil. Um, I, have a bit, I feel like you get a bit of control with this, um, but doing the scratches, um, get quite a nice look about it as well. But always, oh, it's <laughs> stupid as this is going to sound, Always make sure your pencil's pretty sharp as well, um, especially when you want to do some, you know, very sort of fine uh, scratching. Uh, but for the bulk of it, you know, you know, you're right really. Um, particularly obviously you're doing edges, you know, you just use the side of it. So you know, I'm not going to worry too much about that there. Um, so. Few fine scratches like that. Belts have hit it or whatever. Oh yeah, it's caught it or whatever. So there you go, nice and simple as that. We'll carry on with that, see how it looks at the end. So there we go, uh, all the scratch, well pretty much most of the scratch work uh, done there, very happy with that. Um, what I have done as you can probably just about see there, uh, I've used the light uh, green there for some sort of light scratching but I will go over some of those with a pencil uh, again. But yeah, for the time being, uh, very happy with that. So uh, yeah, looks good. Okay, so there we go, uh, all done and dusted. Dusted pigment. Oh, sorry. Uh, so, <laughs> so yeah. So uh, that's all done there. Just uh, gave it a bit of a fairly light-ish uh, coating. Uh, this is with AK uh, European Earth. This is sort of matte varnish. Still got a bit of a sheen to it. That's okay. Looks all right. It's partly just due to the light. Um, and then so it's on the battery. And we'll just plonk that on. Extremely happy with that, I think it looks pretty good. Um, got, I think, a nice fair bit of usage 
I've seen stuff like this on some of them before, um, you know, with this sort of level of dusting uh, just sitting there. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with that. So uh, yeah, all good. So there we go. Uh, we're pretty much all uh, ready for two halves uh, to meet. Um, all that really to be fair, it's all that stuff for putting into the exhaust uh, stubs there. But I thought I'd give you a final look before it's all uh, closed in. So uh, yeah, I finally got uh, the uh, seat belts put in because I actually forgot to do that earlier on. Um, and the control panel there. Now both of these are upgrades. It's the only part that we've allowed uh, upgrade wise in uh, the build. Uh, these are from uh, Eddard. Um, we wanted to get seat belts. Well, I, I insisted on seat belts because uh, with the size of the cockpit, um, you know, and the scale, you're going to see that um, bit missing. So we all, we set about looking for these. Uh, Stuart had actually found the seat belt set and centre console for eight nine eight no sorry eight but just about eight pounds um, off eBay. And we thought that's a bit of a no-brainer because it was like eight quid just for either the seat belt or the console. So we uh, ordered those in. Um, so yeah, we're, we're all done there now. Um, all washed. Uh, decals are in there. You can see that. Get a bit of focus on there. There we go. Uh, so yeah, um, I'm I'm really pleased with this. Um, I've done a little bit more work than probably what I'd normally do because uh, we've got six months to do this. So I've, I've tried to push myself a little bit in certain parts um, with you know doing the extra bit of wine which it actually not going to see I and mean, you can tell from there you ain't really going to see it anyway um, I think the only bits we're going to see is just about some of the wiring uh, on the radio sorry battery there keep getting these two mixed up um, but yeah that's that's all done now um, and it's ready to be uh, all fitted together so there you go guys, uh, that's the uh, cockpit uh, section uh, part done there. Um, it's gone together um, actually really, really well. Um, so I'm very happy with that. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna do my best um, to keep you updated uh, with this uh, on YouTube and see what's going on. But if you follow us on Instagram uh, and Facebook in particular, you'll be able to see pretty much everything uh, that's going on uh, there. So. Um, Thanks guys uh, for watching and I'll catch you next time.